Welcome to the Connor's Shooting live stream. I will be your host for the evening until Callum returns from the toilet. As you can see, I am ready for you all. Please let me know what you like. think of our new host. Is anyone even watching? I think so. Right. I'm back from my week yeah, now. Yeah, you, you, you can sit here. <laughs> <laughs> evening, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining. This will certainly not be the... Uh, standard live stream as I'm sure you're all used to. Of course, we have Connor's back for once. Uh, well, for starters. Um, and for once. For once. <laughs> one time only. It's one, one time, time only special. Well, I don't know. We might we might start streaming again once we move. Yes, yes, we're we're going to. I haven't actually. I've kept that. Oh, okay. Oh, we're just, uh, uh, <laughs> there's going to be a big reveal. Big reveal. Um, I'm sure the regulars will notice that we the the backdrop has has changed. Mm -hmm. That is because we are up. We redecorated. <laughs> what do you mean we? I redecorated. Yes. <laughs> what do you mean you? Like this is our house. It's my house. We're, we're actually a married couple. Yes. Um. That's that's how she we. She did like. call this the snug. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so we are up in Scotland at the moment, literally uh, about half, minutes, half, yeah, half an hour, 20 yeah. minutes ago, turned up. Uh, we're in a lovely Airbnb, some uh, fantastic hosts, which hopefully we don't make too much noise. Um, but yes, we are uh, up here for the, what's oh, the Scottish Championships? This is the Scottish Championships, the first shotgun level three of the year. Um, we're here early because I'm working the match and mm -hmm. Callum is filming it. Yep. So yeah, we, we'll all kick off tomorrow with the pre-match. Should be a yep. good weekend. So it's going to be three days of shooting, pre-matches for all the ROs um, and sort of range staff to be able to shoot the match before they then go and RO it during the main match, will be, which will be Saturday and Sunday. You're shooting the Saturday. Yep. And I'm going to be shooting the Sunday. Um, trying, I'm, going to, I'm going to get as much footage uh, as possible there's going to be stuff going out on magload and english shooting um sort of as per really uh, very sort of different videos mm -hmm. um magload's a little bit more professional um <laughs> <laughs> well we'll probably do the sort of we haven't really decided yet i know no, this no, close no. to the match but we'll probably do the sort of um match coverage of all you're all used to um, yep. going out on magload because um callum is the only person filming up here at the level three at uh, this level three that i'm aware um, of that you're yeah. aware of so um, we'll probably do some more typical match coverage like that and you'll do your usual English shooting, ranting and raving on your channel. <laughs> I don't rant at matches, apart from when I lose. So he rants at matches. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, so anyone that has maybe just jumped in on this uh, on this channel, it's your first time watching. Um, sorry, um, <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> this is not the usual setup. So this is a, a chance for you guys to ask any questions, bring up any topics, start any discussions that you want around shooting or uh, otherwise. Um, for you regulars, you know what sort of debauchery we get up to um, on the stream, especially. I know we kicked off with it. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, that's that's a little taste, um, especially when we're on the stream there two, will be together. Licking. Only if you ask nicely. Um, there, there, it was quite an interesting car ride up, I'll say the least. It was great. <laughs> it was very uneventful. We're going to pop to the chat later. We're going to pop to the <laughs> chat. <laughs> yeah, we anyway. like most of our in-car entertainment consisted of, consisted of taking the piss out of the names of places that we saw. Yes. Um, and amongst other things. Amongst other things. <laughs> I think the highlight of the trip was right near the end when we came across that hump bridge. <laughs> so we've been driving. So well, you've been driving six and a half hours. Six and a half hours. And my car normally gets 250 miles to a tank. And it was a 360 mile journey. So I was in super eco mode. We managed to get here with 80 miles to spare on the tank. So we've been driving very slowly, very carefully the entire way up. Coming through at the back roads of Scotland, I s we come around this corner and I see a humpback bridge, a really big well, one. Well, it was it was like a bridge like that. Yeah, it was a ramp. And instantly, instinct took over. I put my foot to the floor, <laughs> and we left the earth for a good half a second. Yes, yes. I <laughs> I screamed a little bit. Uh, I needed the toilet immediately when we got here to clean up. Um, but yeah, I've never I've never seen a TT fly, and. We were probably still under the speed limit. <laughs> probably. Yes. Yes, we were. We were probably 100%. still under the speed limit because we, we came around that corner at like five miles an hour, saw the humpback bridge and it was... But I don't think it was really necessary to stop, engage launch control. And just... <laughs> I mean, it brings a whole new meaning to the word launch control, doesn't it? Um, Take off. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, we um, you can get involved. You can ask questions on the stream. We'll try and answer as many as possible. We've we'll got, probably just ignore you like we usually do. We've got a few um, few topics to to talk about. Obviously, we're sort of in the mindset of the competition uh, mm -hmm. this weekend. Um, it's going to be very very interesting. Going to try and obviously cover as much uh, as possible. So try and keep the uh, live stream going. Literally got in through the front door. Started unpacking. I, I, I'd gone for a wee, like the second <laughs> I came in. By the time I came out, the camera was out, the mic was out. I didn't know you managed to fit this much in your pelly case, to be quite honest. Yeah, so I've got it down to a fine art. Um, it so doesn't it's... look like a fine art to me. It looks like a jumbled mess. Everything fit and everything's here. That's what. That's what's important. <laughs> and most of it survived. And most of it, yeah. Yeah, that Humbrack Bridge broke a few bits. It didn't, actually. There was such a smooth landing it coming was. off of that. It was. I, I mean, it is a quattro. It is you a know, quattro. So it's, you know, rally... It's, it was a, I'm a rally driver. <laughs> of course you are. Um, so yeah, what yeah. are you guys? Are you guys sharing a bed tonight? Uh, yeah, Cat Cat has corrected us. My partner it is a TTS, not a TT. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. it is very important. Um, That's what Florence said. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, are we sharing a bed tonight? Oh, it depends um, how well Connor's wines and dines me. I'm not a, a put out on the first date sort of. Again, take away. Okay, sold. <laughs> <laughs> Kebab. Kebab, kebab, kebab. Um, I thought it was a bit behind the scenes of the Maglode calendar <laughs> when that started. We should do a Maglode calendar. No, we shouldn't. It will be 13 pictures of me posed nude. Why 13? Why not? Well, it's the Maglode calendar. 13 months in the Maglode year, right? <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, whilst yeah. we're waiting for people to talk, because they clearly haven't woken up or they're not engaged whatsoever. Yeah. As, as you probably can tell... So not prepared. Nope. So not ready. Nope. Usually, usually I have a notepad of topics to discuss <laughs> during a, a live stream. He forgot a pen. <laughs> yeah. So I was scrambling to to sort of put together the topic. So yeah. we are completely win- winging it. Although I'm I'm just going to get straight into well, one of two topics I managed to pre prepare. I was going to talk a little bit about why I'm shooting the Saturday and not the Friday. Just as like a little yeah thing. yeah yeah, yeah. sure sure. So, um, for those of you who don't know, a major match like this, um, currently with the number of competitors who want to enter, uh, the match has to be run over two days in order to accommodate everyone. And the Scottish match, I believe, has, I think, nearly 100 people entering it total. Um, And they're running the match over Saturday and Sunday. However, the range crew who work Saturday and Sunday also need to shoot themselves. So, there'll generally be a Mm -hmm. pre-match. For this one, it is on the Friday, which is tomorrow. Um, Most crew will work will shoot the pre-match and then work the main match however i choose to do things a little differently um i choose to work the pre-match uh less selfishly because very few crew want to work a pre-match because they want to shoot the pre-match and work the main match and more selfishly because i prefer to shoot on the saturday in the main match with the rest of the competitors. Um, I'll generally be in a squad with people I know, people who make similar stage plans to me, and I have noticed over the past couple of years, every time I've shot a pre-match, I've done worse than when I've shot the main match. So I'll choose to shoot the main match when I can. Well, there's um, and and I've I've experienced this to a point is. If you are in a squad, if you're shooting the main match, like usually, I think it's fair to say the the top shooters. There's a lot of top shooters that are also our road, our rows that end up shooting the Friday, but ten, you know, the the sort of really focused top shooters always shoot the main match, and you pick up a lot. You'll be going through with your squad, analysing the stage, and if you've got a friendly squad, you're going to be bouncing things off of them, and there's going to be squad members that may see things that you don't see, so you can end up doing it doing the stage better because of what your team or Mm -hmm. your squad has um, sort of pointed out to you. And obviously doing it the pre-match, you are the first people um, to see it. You are the first people to be on it. Mm -hmm. There's also, like, the matches are run to a high standard, but Friday is a bit of a tester day, isn't it? Yeah, Friday is testing and tinkering. Um, The pre-match is a really good opportunity to iron out any any kinks in the match this will generally be uh, like activated swingers and things maybe the triggers aren't reset aren't setting them off reliably that'll get fixed by the quartermaster um, at a major level three that match like this you're going to have separate quartermasters stats officers match directors range masters um, all experienced and qualified people so it's going to be run it, it's going to be a very tight ship um, and I think it'll be good generally speaking Scotland um, the pre-match tends to go quite smoothly. They have a very good quartermaster up here. He's well, very good at welding. I've witnessed him <laughs> welding in, in foot-deep snow, um, a popper that managed to get absolutely blatted by buckshot. Uh, it was meant to be blatted by buckshot, yeah. but I don't think it, they... I think they underestimated that year just how much damage it was going to take. And and saying about in terms of it being a test on the Friday, with IPSC, everything's meant to be fair, everything's equal. So if you do have a malfunction, you will be able to reshoot it, mm-hmm. but it messes up your flow. So if you're shooting the Saturday or the Sunday, the main match, you're going to have a smoother time of it. You're going to you know be able to focus on the, the job at hand. So mm-hmm. it can be more beneficial to shoot within those main matches more from a range crew's perspective we want the match to run smoothly and that generally means as few reshoots as possible because what Mm -hmm. we don't want to do is get to the point where we're rushing shooters we want them to be able to take as much time as they need to get ready within reason within reason (laughs) um 
and, and to get on with it. And if there's lots of reshoots, you tend to uh, have a stage that has people backing up behind it. Then people have to shoot the stages out of order. And technically speaking, that's not a fair presentation of stages. So we mm -hmm. do try to avoid that wherever possible. Uh, but we've got a, a, just a quick side question. Um, Stan B, is it actually true that there is no minimum age for a shotgun license? Um, technically, yes, but in theory, no. Um, in theory, no. Pr in practice. In practice, um, in practice, it's two years old. Um, and this isn't saying that a two-year-old can go and get a shotgun license, but there is actually no res age restriction on a shotgun license. But the only age restriction is that you have had to have known your references for at least two years. So yes, in theory, in theory, in theory, a two-year-old could get a um, get a shotgun license in reality in, in reality that's never going to happen i think yeah. the youngest that i was made aware of was a seven-year-old um, and that's going to be a very specific case they're either going to be already a, a very top athlete a very top competitor and they can prove to their feo that look they're they're a future olympian or they're a future potential uh, world champion in in a shooting discipline so they need to start early um, or it's going to be you know potentially the um, the son or daughter of a farmer um, and at seven years old yes that is a young age and it, it sparks the whole debate of how young is too young but I've said it many times before I have seen young shooter like pre-teen shooters handle shotguns rifles mm -hmm. and, and general firearms better than some adults I was shooting a 410 uh, shotgun at nine years old and, well, yeah, yeah, and quite capably. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're very small, very light, and there's not a lot of recoil from a 410 cartridge. You know, a lot of people, when you say about kids shooting, uh, a lot of people will sort of hark back to the unfortunate incident with the Uzi out in America. I think that was a, a nine-year-old or a twelve-year-old, and obviously they weren't capable of controlling that, that was firearm. Irresponsible yes. on the part of the person controlling the gun. Yes, um, you know, a 410 or a 22 bolt action. You know perfectly capable a you know, seven-year-old you know, eight-year-old whatever perfectly capable of controlling the recoil on that um you know there's in, in some ways there's some air rifles that will recoil more <laughs> so it's it's about the judgment call of the supervising adult is this child going to be capable of doing it and when it gets into the license that's the feo's call mm -hmm. like is this child mature enough and responsible enough and, and also competent enough to be entrusted with a shotgun certificate or even a well a firearm certificate there is a minimum, is a minimum age, age 14 yeah. i think it is 14 I or 15 know, top of my head. um i think it's around that number but yes technically the the minimum age is two years old but that's yeah. just never going to happen i used to teach some very young shooters albeit with air rifles um we we always had benches in front of the firing points where we were shooting we made these little staircases out of wood and what they could do is they could rest the gun on there just enough to take the weight but the top of the staircase was rounded so they still had to aim it they couldn't mm -hmm. they couldn't use it as, as a steady it was just there to take the weight we actually moved on from that when we changed the range around mm -hmm. we actually had strings suspended from the ceiling well there were cables uh, okay. and we'd loop it around the barrel and it'd just just be enough to take the weight for them mm -hmm. so that they could hold it and aim it because we're talking about um we're talking about olympic three position rifles even though there were small guns, they're still quite weighty. They're still they? quite heavy. Yeah. Heavy, yeah. Um, so, um, so a lot of people complaining that they weren't. Uh, YouTube wasn't showing them the stream. Uh, this isn't a great conspiracy. I literally created the stream in YouTube about five minutes before we went live. Well, um, five minutes, and then you're running out of time, so you had another five minutes. I, yeah, so it was going to be seven thirty-five. It was, and then close. you were taking too long to set up, and you still yes. needed to eat. Yes, so we um, literally, I, I didn't schedule the, the stream for this evening because I didn't know when we were going to turn up. We, you know, a six and a half hour drive, we could hit traffic. You know, we could get you know stuck in KFC. That's happened I, before. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I didn't want to. I am hungry. I'm Callum. Nice to meet you. Uh, <laughs> we will we, we, we'll, we'll be getting food for, like I'm I'm putting you guys first it took a lot of convincing yeah but it's like right get some food oh well, let's 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 do the stream so uh, I I've didn't got, even know I was doing the stream until like five yeah you were minutes. like what's what's this camera you know no oh, I knew I knew, oh, I knew you again. were doing this I knew, <laughs> I knew you were doing the stream I didn't know I was doing the stream yeah I'm writing you know Connors is back and special guest and he was completely un unawares but yeah. 
I didn't know what time we were going to arrive here, whether it would even be possible. I didn't know what the internet was going to be like, what the setup was going to be like. It's pretty good, actually. It is. It seems to be even more stable than my internet at home, which is no surprise. Um, <laughs> Have you told them the story? Which there's many stories. I, about about your internet at home? Um, no, okay. no. Um, no, I haven't. But I've been, for those of you that may not be aware, I've been actually using my phone as a hotspot for the past few weeks yeah. um, to do the stream. Uh, but I, I do want to say to anyone who is annoyed that you didn't get any pre-warning for the stream, mm -hmm. we don't care. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying to give an explanation. We're I here did, now. I didn't want to put out a stream, a scheduler stream for a time you that then we didn't meet. You should be honoured that we're even here. <laughs> yeah. Honoured that you're here. It's been so long. When was the last time you were on a stream? He's like, bliss. It's been bliss. Months January. of bliss. January. I could actually pin it down to exactly when interesting anyway <laughs> mo moving on um <laughs> yeah so, why didn't we just get food and eat it on stream because that wouldn't we be could have done a food stream i've seen you eat well at least it would have filled two hours <laughs> <laughs> how much food are we getting yes well i don't know you found like 10 takeaways in the in the vicinity so yes yeah scotland seems to be very good for takeaways we we're quite impressed so yeah. far um and talking to scotland um scotsman 762 complain about our laws since you're in you're in scotland complain about our, our air gun laws um it's ridiculous it hasn't done anything it's already been proven and is already being used as an example of why we shouldn't license air guns in the uk or even crossbows for that matter that that came up obviously recently in conversation uh so it's been a complete failure they estimated uh you know x amount of of, of air rifles in scotland and it was something like 20 percent of the estimation were actually handed in or licensed and the millions that they have spent there are you know, the, the people that you want to take the air guns off of are not going to hand them in and license them Criminals don't follow the law. It's kind of just like... Anyway, we're, pre we, we're, we're preaching to the choir. Let's move on. Well, no, they asked us to moan about it. Um, apart from that, obviously, I, I don't think there are any other changes. I think that is why the don't you, difference. Why don't you tell us if there are any changed laws? And yeah. then we'll have something to moan about. Are you allowed Section 1 shotguns in, shot in Scotland? Because that might be a bit of a... Yes, they're allowed Section <laughs> 1 shotguns. I really hope they're allowed Section 1 shotguns in Scotland. But are you allowed slug? <laughs> yes. You're not. Um, no, no, no. Don't rate a food tribe. Um, somebody that makes asked, no sense. Who's big? Who's big spoon? Me. <laughs> there was no hesitation in that. Um, also, buy dirty kebabs and eat them on stream. Top tier YouTube See, content. Exactly. We should have. We should have bought the kebabs. Maybe, maybe we do that for the big unveil stream. We have a oh, feast. It will be Chinese. We're Chinese. having Chinese. Yeah, we're going to have a feast. And it you... will be spread out across the entire floor. <laughs> I don't know if food. we've got enough money for that much takeaway. No, it will be very expensive, but worth it. How far into the promised land did you go? About the tip. Just the tip and only for a second. Um, we're not We're not quite the, uh, the tip because I think the tip is sort of like Gretna Way. We're in Dumfries, which is a little bit further inland, um, <clears throat> which is... We're on the doorstep of the club and the range. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so not too far in. This is... Um, we're so it, we're far enough in to make a quick escape. <laughs> Scotland is lovely. Getting it actually is it's really nice up here. <laughs> getting, getting to Scotland, not so lovely. It was fine, apart from like when Google said, don't take the M6 toll. And then we got stuck in traffic. Yeah. Um, but like, we still made it here before... Even with stops, I think we well we made we made really good time, even with a little bit of of traffic. Yeah. Uh, Bearing in mind, good. like we stuck to the speed limit the entire way up, which we would have done anyway, of course. Um, but <laughs> but we, we we were really taking it easy on the way up. Yeah, and then you know, funny enough, um, you know, it's it's just so typical. We get right near the border of Scotland and it absolutely tips it down. It had been sunny and lovely and bone dry the whole day. We have literally you know, driven pretty much the, the breadth of the country, well, certainly the breadth of England. Um, as soon as we get near Scotland, torrential rain. It's like, yeah. welcome to Scotland. And then it, you said it like plummeted something like 10 or 15 degrees. Well, I don't think it was that much. So it was about 21 degrees going through Birmingham, um, 20 degrees back home. And then by the time we got here, it's about 13 degrees. So it's, it's dropped about 8 degrees or yeah. so. 
And that's, it's, does that it's, make sense? It's, no, sti- it it's still it's still raining, but we have a yeah. lovely view of a bird table, and little birdies can keep coming. And and anyway, it's entertainment for and us. Why not an admin anymore? What, what account are you logged into? My account. Well, I guess you, not. You've got like a comment there, and I don't. I, I can fix that. Oh yeah, um, Captain Crack says always do the M6 toll. Always do the M6 toll. That's like my personal rule as well. Yeah. But um, Google said half an hour longer if we took it. I'm like, well, maybe there's an accident on the toll road. Or it turns or out there were two accidents on the non non toll road. Because <laughs> <laughs> there was the one we got stuck in for ages while they cleared it, and then after we got out of that, there was the other one which um, where f- first one lane was closed and then the other lane was closed. There was there was a lot going on today. <clears throat> Uh, saw a blowout from a lorry. Mm-hmm. Um, saw, when you spend uh, that much time on the road, this is... saw the all DTT front end smash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, don't buy a Peugeot, boys and girls. Don't they, they, they're actually going up in value. The Peugeot is it's like yeah, it's because BRZ. They, it's because BRZ to Subaru. Yeah, okay, well you know, it's, and they're going up in value because Mighty Car Mods have done a, uh, a whole thing on them. Investment cars. There's actually a video. Well, we talked about it last week. I still haven't done that video, unfortunately. Um, but investment guns. We were talking about investment guns mm-hmm. last week, mm-hmm. um, and I've said the the Mosin, an original 870 Wingmaster, mm-hmm. and a Beretta Silver Vision so far. Uh, add a K31 to that list. Well, the thing is with the historic guns, like pers- my well, my personal the, experience the K- with K- the Mosin. The K31 is historic, and the thing is they're really desirable because mm-hmm. they tend to be in really good, good condition. Yep. Um they're extremely accurate mm-hmm. as you've <laughs> as you've witnessed. Yeah. We um, we couldn't hit shit at it bench rest at a hundred yards. Connors does it standing first time. <laughs> and the second and the third. And the second um, and third, yes. But, it wasn't a fluke. But K thirty ones, I remember when I first got back into shooting because I did have a bit of a hiatus and I started looking for one. Um they're about two, three hundred quid mm-hmm. and they were everywhere. And then when I was ready to buy it they're about eight hundred pounds, and you couldn't find them anywhere. I think now they settled at around that price. Although this, I reckon they're going to start going back up again. It's like classic cars, right? Classic car. Once they've reached rock bottom, you know, and there's a lot that do it that you think, how low can they go? And, when, and once they re- reach that rock bottom, classic cars never tend to dec- decrease in value. They only tend to to appreciate. And it's because they're not making any more of them. They're becoming rarer. They're harder to maintain, more expensive men- to maintain. Like Enfields, like there's there's only a couple of places in the UK that I know of, well, actually only one that I know of, that can technically build a new um, Enfield. Mm-hmm. But they have to use original unused barrels to do it. Yeah, new, but there is still a lot of new old stock stuff floating around. Yeah, but it's becoming harder and harder and harder. So people that end up using the mo- uh, the Enfields, as you quite rightly should, you shoot out the barrel. Well, that's another barrel gun. They're not making any more. So, no. like you could you could be here forever listing off all the old guns. But Thing I want is, to get a few modern, like the, the much, 870 is how like How much a, do you think it would decrease in value? Because this is something I plan to do when my Enfield shot out. Because it's mm. about we'll turn half, it into a 410. About halfway there. No, not turn it into a 410. I would have it um, bored and re-sleeved. Well, it's, what's its value worth to you? Are you ever going to sell it? No. Then, then, it does, then it's not... Because everyone who lives in the UK should own an Enfield. Absolutely. I've never owned an Enfield. Um, I've owned mean, a Mosin, though. Comrade. 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 Comrade Callum. <laughs> I, I didn't get the chance to buy the, the Enfield, but it will be higher up on the list. So with with the older gun, I want to sort of look more towards, let's say, the, like the modern classic guns. You know, the Silver Pigeon ones. They're, you know, they're not as old as the Enfield, but they are getting older now. The, the Wingmaster the, the, the 870s. Sil- the, the old Silver Pigeons are appreciating because yeah. they changed to roll engraving. Well, and when you say the, the old, it's they're not actually. It's not even like they're, they're even not the that old, old ones. No, they're not even that old. Like your age one. Yeah, which is still under ten years old. Yeah, but they because um, I think about four or five years ago they changed to roll engraving, and certainly the ones we've seen coming through in the last couple of years, um, I've just got like bottom of the barrel wood on them. It, they they look like pine with stain. I, I, I say I say it all the time. Like if you're going to buy a silver pigeon, I would highly recommend buying one that's maybe. I think say five, five might even be a bit too early, but maybe six to ten years old. Mm. That I really think I got, I got super super lucky. It was um, 
comparing mine to older ones and, and newer ones, I haven't yet found a basic Silver Pigeon Sporter that, in my opinion, is as nice as, as the one that I ended up picking. Uh, so it wasn't, you know, there was no sort of skill in that. It was pure luck. I think at that time they were using the right blend of sort of mass manufacturing with still a little bit of, you know, that hand touch or hand finished. And obviously businesses move forward, they need to make it more economical. They move to different processes and, and it tends to just lose a little bit of the spark. A modern silver pigeon, a brand new silver pigeon today, you cannot go wrong with them. They're still highly reliable, well-made guns, but it's the the glitz around it, it's the grade of the wood, it's it's the finish on the engraving that has really really changed. But I think you know the the point the the, the main point in the video that I'll probably make is I don't think you can go wrong with buying any age of silver pigeon. Eventually, it will be worth on the second hand market what you paid for it. It might take you five, ten years. Certainly, if you go and buy a 10 year old one now, you're never going to lose any money on it. If as long as unless you, you break it, unless you break it, as long or as you let look it get after rusty. it. But I'm not known for well maintaining my guns or cleaning my guns. Or trying to shoot a 50 cal for it. Or no, I mean, if they didn't want you to do it, it wouldn't fit, right? Uh, but yeah, as long as you keep it in good. What's a mukbang? Oh, it's um, it's like you like live stream eating. Oh. It's not. It's nothing. That, uh, Why don't we do it? Let's. let's I want a mock bang. I think. Bang. I'm going to regret having said that now, aren't, aren't I? It's the Korean word for eating. ASMR broadcast. You guys want to hear us eat? <laughs> we could be. We could be sitting on a cash cow here. <laughs> um, yes, we will do a. We do a muck bang special uh, at some point if you really want. I will um, just sit here and eat, and you can have all the ASMR you want. Oh, you want to talk about those noises? We got one of those really annoying spam callers yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, who played it off so well. I was with the first line assistant for 20 minutes, giving them the runaround. Um, being completely, you know, not doing anything silly, just being a bit idiotic. Pret pretending to be a complete Luddite, really. It, it didn't come hard. Um, so it's uh, so then she passed me on to her supervisor, and then I started to get silly. He was asking me what web page I was currently on, and I was like, I'm on Pornhub. So they're you know. trying to get you on to TeamViewer, so Team they Viewer, can log into yeah. your computer and install a piece of software. Um, and yeah, and, and I was. He, he I was, goes, yeah. What website are you on? I don't want to tell you. Go on, tell me. It's embarrassing. Go on, how embarrassing? Tell me what website you're on. Pornhub. And then he goes. Are you so, so you're jacking off. <laughs> It was like, yes. He's just like, have you come? And I was like, not yet. He's like, would you like me to jack off? I was like, yeah, go for it. And then did... Cod as well obliged. Um, and then hung up, which we thought was brilliant. But my, my ethos with these spammers is the longer they are talking... <laughs> just watch the viewers dropping. <laughs> they're spiking. They're spiking. Um, the longer that they're on the phone to you know, someone like us, the less time that they're going to be actually scamming somebody so you, i like to have a little bit of fun with them every now and then you were quite quite angry that day and i think it was a good good, it, good it opportunity was a good event. it was a good event um so somebody asking i think it was how often was it evening how often do you clean your mini rifles i will clean mine after every match or practice so clean, <laughs> cl cleaning guns is one of these things where a lot of people will tell you don't clean your gun all this kind of stuff and there is there is sort of a truth to that because when you clean your gun, there's always the risk of not putting something back or knocking a piece of dirt into where it shouldn't be and all that kind of stuff. But or, yeah, introducing a problem. Introducing yeah. a problem. But when you know your gun and you know which bits to be clean and how to clean them and you clean it properly, um, you'll always make it run better. And when I say clean it properly, that means using the appropriate lubricants in the appropriate areas, cleaning it with the appropriate things. A lot of people think cleaning a gun is spray it, scrub it, spray it. Um, you, you're going to cause problems. You need to do it properly, and it does take effort, unfortunately. On, on the flip side, I'm really, really bad for cleaning my guns. Well, it's because um, I clean them. Yeah, I'm not legally allowed to. Um, <laughs> no. Uh, I With my Smith, I there was a, a time when I had the 12-inch barrel put on it by Suffolk Rifle Company, who are no longer in business anymore. Um, they pulled it out, and the look on his face when he saw the um, the breach face um, and the... What's the lug? The breach. The uh, ejector. 
the with the no, it's like the it's the metal it's lug barrel, on the barrel extension. Yeah, yeah but, um, it he was like, I've never seen one that color, and I was like, that's just how it's always been. And he's like, no, it's not. And when he went and got the twelve inch barrel, it's like, oh wow, um, <laughs> I'm I'm horrendous for for not cleaning guns. I my approach for them is if it doesn't work, I'll give it a clean and hope that fixes it. If it doesn't work, you give it to me. I'll give it a clean and hope it fixes it. So either way, I get a working gun. Um, but in in terms of competition guns, yes, I I certainly will have a a tinker before before a match, um, and would certainly recommend doing so. You know, even say like on the and unfortunately, I'm not able to do it with the gun that I'll be using on Sunday. Um, but let's say I've got I have my licenses and and I had the gun here. Yes, on Saturday evening, I'd probably. Um, you know, take off the tube, uh, take out the bolt, give everything a wipe down, um, use some uh, sort of gun cleaner, get in there, make sure all the all the guns. You don't uh, know what gun cleaner to use. I, gun cleaner, just gun. gun you don't cleaner. have a single solvent that says gun cleaner on it. I'll find one. Um, anyway, <laughs> you, you get all the crud out, give it a wipe down, re-oil it. Again, I the reason I don't do like gun cleaning videos is because I do it. I don't know what to do. Like I've done videos in the past where I've shown you what the I do, is, and and throughout all of it, I say I'm not saying this is what you should do, but this is what I do. We can't put gun cleaning videos on YouTube, can we? Yeah, because then it it starts looking into maintenance and modification and all that. I don't know. I mean, the the it, it would be good to actually show you guys how to do it properly. How how, how I do it. It might not necessarily be properly, mm -hmm. but certainly I'm quite thorough and I have a good understanding of my guns so mine is just pick off the crud get it out the way throw some more maglu like that's why I don't clean my guns I just soak the shit in, in maglu and then it's Mag fine maglu is is the only gun oil we need absolutely like, apart from when you need grease but you can't buy too much because we will milk Connor's dry he needs to replenish you'll notice over. I've lost a lot of weight <laughs> that's because anyone attending the level 2 uh, action air match they everyone who attends is getting a bottle of maglu yeah, my nipples are very sore. <laughs> uh, anyway, fortunately, they're only small bottles. Um, <laughs> yeah, if, if they were the hundred mil bottles, oh, <laughs> you'd, you'd be half the man. Um, oh yeah, guys, don't forget, give it a thumbs up. Connors is back. Give a thumbs up for Connors. Yeah, and don't forget when you get to a hundred, get kick him off the street. No, no, we've elevated now. We've we've had to set the bar at a thousand. Fifty. No, <laughs> we're already at twenty-eight. <laughs> Um, so hit, twenty-eight. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Hit the hit the uh, hit the like button. Hit the like button. Make, even make if us you happy. don't like it, um, Tim. Even if you don't like it, what are you even doing here? Well, just giving engagement. Thank you very much. There, there's actually a lot of people that don't like the channel that end up watching it quite a lot. Yeah, I know. Which I'm thankful for the views and stats anyway. Or they're so. just people collecting intelligence on you. <laughs> They're, they're more of the same. Yeah. Um, well, you say collecting. I say collecting intelligence. Every time they watch one of your videos, they lose brain cells. So. <laughs> I do try. Uh, it's like the anti-intelligence intelligence. intelligence. Um, Tim, stage, stage breakdown videos. Yeah. Stage of app. Um, yeah. Uh, watched watched the video on the speed steels and was wondering on the first stage pendulum roughly how big are the steel plates and what distance are they? Cheers. Um, you should be able to Google this. It, it is. I don't know off the top of my head. Let's. Um, what was the question? How uh, big? Speed are, seals, how big are the steel plates? What distance are they? Um, I don't know off the top of my head. I can tell you. Pendulum was. About that big. <laughs> no, really, <laughs> they're, they're they're about. Um, I want to say. I'm tr I'm trying. Well, anything I tell you will be a guess, and so. Like because Steel Challenge is completely consistent, you know it, it, it has done a, it has the a same. Rule set and yes. Here we go. I have got the diagram. I'll bring this up for you guys so you can see it. Get rid um, of our ugly mugs. So here we go. This is so this should be universal for across the, the the world. So you can see here that you've got your four back plates, your stop, your your sort of frontal stop plate, and this is going to be your shooting area. I wasn't going to be too far. Off. I was I was going to say twelve inches, but. That's what she said. Yep. Um, so yeah, you've got the two 10 inches, the two 12 inch, and then the 12 inch stop plate. And as it says there, you've got 10 yards to the stop plate and 18 yards to the rear plates. Um, so yeah, you like literally, this is all I've, I've typed in Google uh, and you can yeah. do this for any of the steel talent stage. You're going to get like, what's, what's your favorite stage? Oh, is it roundabout? Ding, 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 ding. 
roundabout steel challenge. Let's see what comes out for that. So there we go. Yes, th this is both of our favourite stages. Yeah. Um, so you, there you go. You can just go on YouTube, uh, not YouTube, you can go on Google and find out all of the stage diagrams. And this is the biggest appeal of uh, speed stills. You can or, practice or, it. Or steel challenge. Yeah, yeah. you can it, train. First of all, we're. it's actually one of those rare shooting sports that we are on a level playing field with the Americans, albeit we can't do it with nine mils, two twos. On on two two, we're on a level playing field. Why why aren't we on a level playing field? Have you seen the kids out there like obliterating stages that we like they're getting like one and a half seconds on a stage and, and we're, we're like struggling to get five. <laughs> no no two and a half. Two and a half was probably your best run of the entire day and it only happened I oh, know you didn't one, even get I got a sub two second, I'll have you know. No, you did, didn't I? Just oh, on, wait, on the no. last, on the roundabout, the I, last stage. I did as well on roundabout. I got a sub two. No, I think it was just me and Paul. Hmm? Maybe. I don't know. Um, but, but it's consistent. Yes, the Americans have more places to go and practice it. We actually... We have, we, we have Yeevely. Yeevely. Luckily, it's in the Midlands, so we can, you know, it's it's as painful for us from the south to go up as it is for, for you guys in Scotland or even in the north to come down. No, because it's still like six hours for them to come down from Scotland. Well, you shouldn't live so bloody far up the country then, should you? <laughs> um, but, but no. Although we can definitely understand why you live in Scotland. It's lovely up there. It bit. is, you know, all we, where we drove through, once we'd got into Scotland and we're trying to find the actual place where we're staying... They were there's just these little houses dotted like miles apart, you know, and they're overlooking With all of GTRs these. GTRs in the driveway. Oh yes, goals. Like there was this house, quite modest, small, looked quite nice, fairly new. The garage was half the size of the house, right next to the house with a white GTR parked in front of it. Unfortunately, Connors didn't get to see it, no. but we we might because it's right I, by the garage. I can see it in my mind's eye. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so um yeah so yeah I, I like speed steels because it's it's consistent it's fair it's, it's like 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 ipsc in a way but every stage is always going to be the same you're going to get no deviation which allows you to practice and practice and practice and that's why you get kids doing these one and a half second strings practice it's speed, just muscle memory speed steels is literally drills it's nothing but drills just go out and do it again and again and again and again um and you're, so, you're talking about the difference between like first and third place are the most marginal of marginal gains where they've managed to eke out a split second from somewhere. Well, we say how marginal IPSC can, can be sometimes, you know, fractions of percentages in your scores. But you're talking sometimes like hundreds or, or even thousands of seconds that will win you, but will will drop, drop you down from first down to like fifth. You know, it's... Um, and and that's the appeal of speed still. It's just it's consistency. You need yeah. to be really consistent. And and, I and that's find... why you fail in it it's so hard, <laughs> so hard. I By get... one place. <laughs> <laughs> so we um, oh yeah yeah. Paul Damn beat me guy. last time. Both of them action. beat me with my own gun. Action air shooters. Watch out for action air shooters. They are pretty <laughs> quick. Yep. Um, everyone goes, oh, they, they're not used to shooting real guns. Yeah, yeah. Say that at your peril. <laughs> um, Daniel S., it's 8 p.m. Because um, the question above it is, what time is it where we are? And it is oh. past eight. Oh, you okay. have accidentally scrolled down quite a lot. Have you've, I? You've, you've missed out quite a lot. Where, so. where did you leave off? I don't video know. and speed steals. Um I just go would like out. to see more section seven on the channel. So would I. Absolutely. Unfortunately What's that on the channel? Section seven. Seven three seven oh, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm assuming that's what you mean. I would absolutely love to do it. Unfortunately the only way for you to shoot um a section seven three is to either be the holder of that section seven three firearm or to be a section five dealer. I'm not even an FAC holder at this at this moment, so I've got a few more steps. <laughs> Shut up. Uh, I've got a few more steps to 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 get through or, or to climb up before that. Um, Should I'm, be long now. I'm going to say that. Hopefully, fingers crossed. We've been saying that for two years. Yes, I've been saying it for five. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, with with seven three, the community, if they were to invite me, and when I say the community, it's basically HBSC. It literally is a club. Of people who shoot seven three, the historic small ball, small. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna butcher this. I, I always forget it. H B 
BSA gun. There we go, it's in my history. Historical Breech Loading Small Arms Association. There we go. I mean, in terms of marketing, if I'm going to give the HBSA a little tip, like just cut the name down a little bit, make it... They do. Bit... They it's HBSA. Yeah, and then I just think of banking. That's HSBC. I'm dyslexic. That's not their problem. I literally thought it was... That's would... not my problem, and that's not their problem. But I'm the one trying to give them the publicity. They need to make it simple for me. If you want to shoot uh, Section 7, talk to them. They know, um, they know like, literally everything about it. There is a 7.3. I mean, I can talk more about the laws, but I think... I, There's a video on it. I pretty much covered everything in, yeah. in that video. Um, I would like to get more involved and give it more publicity. Um, unfortunately, in my experience, the HBSA um, is very adverse to media and promotion of it. They Their feeling very much is that if we show this off too much, the public will get their... Um, their backs up and they will call for it to be banned and the whole point of 7.3 and 7.1 was to protect preserve. historic or preserve yeah. um, historically significant firearms um, or yeah like with uh, firearms with high historical value uh, from the crusher after Dumblay. Mm -hmm. so we you know that they are all about like desperately trying to keep hold of what they've got rather than grow it um, and obviously I'm very much the latter and they're very much the former so we don't sort of see eye to eye on that but if if I was to be invited by, from the HBSA to sort of show more about it or or any section 5 or 7 3 dealer you, they hate you. I know but what I'm saying is Didn't the you, offer is what there. What did you call them? I've, I've never actually been mean to the HBSA. Okay right. The NRA on the other hand. Moving um, swiftly on <laughs> So we, uh, so yeah, I, I'd be well up for doing more, but it's a very, very sort of sheltered, almost reclusive community, um, and it's it's like dead man's shoes in in some cases to get into it. So very hard to get into it. You've almost got to pass these unwritten tests to sort of prove yourself to. Well, it. it's a club, so you have to fit in to join the club at the end of the day. You do, and. I just want to shoot, you know, whilst the, the historical aspect of firearms is very intriguing, certainly the technical and engineering side is very intriguing, the main reason I'm in into shooting is to do the shooting, you know, that's what I, I enjoy, certainly. Um, um, whereabouts are you? Because you're, you've, you've gone quite far down, haven't you? Yeah. Can I... If you see anything you want to bring up, let me, let me know. Um, there was one thing someone talked so about. Just... Oh, Captain Crack was asking me if I played Elite Dangerous Odyssey yet. This is this is an odyssey. This is dangerous. Okay, they, this is. I am the danger. I, I, I am the danger. <laughs> uh, no, I haven't played Odyssey. Fell out of love completely with Elite um, once I just start, discovered X Four had been released. So yeah, there we go. Uh, Oscar, tell him how is your app, uh, FAC application going with your license department? Is it looking like you will get it back in the near future? I have no idea what my um, official line is. Like I. There, there is there's always stuff going on in the background always and i love to be very honest about it and upfront when i lost the certificates it was actually everyone around me including the barrister basque solicitor friends family saying don't talk about it online i very much wanted to um but there are things that are going on and need to be cleared up in the background before i can progress with the application the application is in the application is in, it hasn't been rejected, it is technically being processed, there just because of my, let's say, unique circumstances, there, You're a are, prat. <laughs> there are a few things that are, are being sorted. I, I, I'm going to say... A Pro tip, if you want an FAC, don't piss off the head of your FLD. I, didn't, I haven't like intentionally pissed him off. You don't intentionally piss off anyone, yet you piss off everyone. Thumbs up on the video if he pisses you off, guys. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, so, where, so no, where, they, where's your light count? I want to see it go up. There's a lot of misunderstanding go, that's going on. Going um, obviously, I'm very public facing. A lot There's a lot of things that go out there. And whilst a picture sometimes can say a thousand words and a video even more, there are there's sometimes some lost in translation, let's just say. And, and I think some people have, in a way, got the wrong end of the stick. Um, so we're just sorting out that. Um, but I assume once that's all sorted, we will be pressing forward. Well, they hopefully will be pressing forward um, and doing the uh, the application. I cannot wait. Um, somebody asking, how is Maglo doing? Uh, Maglo doing good. 
We were right. Cheers for asking. Um, <laughs> there, there is, there is some big stuff again going on there, in the there, background. There's a lot of big stuff. We've got a lot of new equipment. Um, so there was people asking about the 3D printers. Oh yeah, I think that's all. Sinner asking about um, how the 3D printers. They are currently standing by, awaiting something. Yes. Um, which, which will be disclosed hopefully very, very soon. Um, but it's one of these things. It's not. It's not like we're being like all like secret Nelly about it. Um, we don't want to say something's going to happen if it and, doesn't happen, and then it doesn't happen. Yeah. So you know, once things are signed on the dotted line, um, that's then a big, that's a big clue. Well, no, there's lots of things you sign: yeah. Ma- marriage certificates, oh, divorce certificates. We need to do that later. Oh, no, I think that's tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow morning. Yeah, well, I mean, Gretna's only down the road. <laughs> um, so, so yeah there's there's a lot going on uh, we're not deliberately being secretive we just don't want to um, s- say something and it not happen basically you know we don't want to yeah. get your we don't get our hopes up never mind your guy, guys hopes up but yeah. it will be awesome w- what is in the the pipeline will be well the, the main focus is of course mag load on it mm-hmm. um, but it's going to be awesome for English shooting as well um, a lot more content hey. a lot more live st- yeah. interesting live streams yeah um we could do live machining videos connor's makes a gun live on it it's banned <laughs> <laughs> um oh, it depends on oh, no because like everything that's machined is in essence a gun part oh is it manufacturing yes. no it's just it... i i shit you not if if YouTube sees you machining like a bolt charging handle that will be it you've you've shown someone how to make a gun they they took down thumbs up if you want to see that. <laughs> <laughs> they took down. To be fair, um, they don't want to. You don't want me to film. Definitely not live. Me making the charging handles, because the noise is absolutely horrendous. We just have like a mute. Yeah. And, and back to the office. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, YouTube actually took down like the OG. It's back up now because I protested it and and told them what idiots they were being. They they took down the original review of the fifteen twenty two, which was one of like the first videos I'd ever put out on the channel. Because it's I, bad. Go watch it, it. Oh, it really is. It makes me cringe. I cannot watch any video sort of older than like three years old. I can't watch any of your videos. <laughs> You are the video now. I am. Um, I am. And I hope you guys appreciate it. <laughs> it's just, just sat there playing Minesweeper. I'm not. <laughs> just, for, for anyone who knows, wants to know why I'm looking down, I'm monitoring the chat on here. And We're not entirely sure if the internet connection here is stable enough for two laptops to be running at the same time. It's good it's, it's as well. Although, if you if you get your Windows machine, yeah, it'll definitely crash it. <laughs> like, little, little mister, I have deforested the Amazon with my printer glitches because Apple can't make a printer driver work. It's a feature. It's not a feature. Oh, yeah. We've got you... loads of scrap paper for me to make notes on now. It knows. It's like, here's your pre-scrapped paper for you. And most of it's blank, which is perfect for notes. <laughs> the, I've got a really funny bug with um not with just Ma- you. Morton, uh, yeah paul as well he yeah. also uses a mac good lad um he uh, any t- it's probably like one in three or one in four times that we send something to the printer the printer will just spit out like one line if anyone random- if anyone knows the, the font wingdings yes it's just yeah. spitting out like one one, one symbol or one line of yeah. wingdings on a piece of paper and if and it, it'll do it double-sided if any of you and to the point where it was wasting so much paper we, we ran out of paper so if anybody has ordered from magload in the last i would say between a week ago to and a month to, like, to a month to a month if are, you look if you look on the back of your packing slip you <laughs> might see a wingdings <laughs> Because we had to start reusing the paper. Yeah, we, we got very, very low. There may even be some manuals that got out with <laughs> with a wingding symbol on there. Yeah, a few. Um, oh, no, who was it? Oh, it was the accountant's forms. Oh, the they, accountant's forms had wingdings all over them. We had no choice. They were like, we need you to sign this. We're like, we have no paper. It's like, it's, it's been wingdinged. <laughs> so we had to send the wingding, photo, uh, wingding documents, that, unfortunately. Um, David Kiddle, thank you for for joining. Um, better late than never. Um, also, Tina, Sina or Simon, uh, two thousand and four. Um, Apple Yuck. You're not supposed to use his real name. He always he always complains that I don't use his real name because he's like, do you actually know who I am on here? No, Sina. 
Yeah, but he always goes. Yeah, but you don't know. You don't remember me. When I know you. We. I remember you extremely well. You bring me Pepsi. How could I not? N- not just one. Like the first. No, 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 not just a Pepsi. A the, case of Pepsi. The first time we saw that, that is a guaranteed way to get me to remember you for. Wasn't it two cases? I think it might have been two cases as well. Yeah, that, that, no, that's that's like cases. the ultimate grit. That's how you go to like VIP customer level straight away. Is when no you, discounts. With, <laughs> <laughs> with, you actually pay more. Yeah, because it's VIP. It's exclusive. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, um, Sinner got out of uh, out of the car with like a crate of Pepsi over his shoulder, and it was like, "We love, love you." So yeah, Simon, Simon Sinner, you are you're welcome down any time you like. Um, a few people have asked um, why uh, make a video and why you don't have your FAC. You've already got one up, haven't you? I might have taken it down. Okay. I haven't actually made a. The, there have. I think there's between three or four videos you can sort of, like, piece the picture together. But I have never made a video specifically like chronologically going through the past five years. Um, it's getting more interesting by the day. Uh, but yeah, there's like I, I've talked about it on the stream loads of times there's been various um, groups on Facebook that I've I've like put the full story on we, we don't need to get him started on it right now can I just remind everyone that I am hungry <laughs> I'm Callum um, every proper engineer is using Windows not a Mac true, mm, true. Linux the, no 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 for okay for uh, scientists unless, unless you're gonna no, no, no. unless you're gonna say unless you're gonna include like software engineers well, I would include a software engineer as an engineer, but he's talking about mm. machining and making mm. stuff, right? Well, it, dep- mm. it depends. But you what use you- Windows. Yes, I was forced to use Windows at my previous work. Because you have to use Windows because all the software is on Windows. I protested heavily. And that would die. I did my final year project would- with SolidWorks on that. That would die. Not that one, actually. It was a much older one. It didn't die. It was glitchy. <laughs> so my, my my computer, which is literally a SolidWorks machine, mm-hmm. struggles to keep thermal control when SolidWorks is running. Your computer, where your heatsink is, I mean, it's it's yes, it's, it's whirring, just doing this. Yes. So, well, to be fair, your 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 models are probably quite simple. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Um, Oscar Colt, thank you very much. Uh, much appreciated. Um, David, sort the trophy oh, for the... Oh, that's a good question. I, be- I want you to answer this question live on stream. That one right there. Why are you called English shooting, not British shooting? It's an extremely good question. Um, to be honest, I don't know. No, I do know because British shooting is the... Um, it's it's the organisation that deals with uh, like international... British shooters for like the Olympics. Oh, the good. <gasps> it's a hair. Do you see the hair? It's a baby hair. It is. You it's, can't see it. I'm you, sorry. You can't. Sorry. I don't know if I can take a photo. It's, it's no, it's, it's it's gone. It's gone. Okay. It's gone. There was a baby hair outside. By the way, so Scotland. That all is... the drugs are kicking in. <laughs> <laughs> Scotland is gorgeous, and um, so we're in an Airbnb at the moment, and the owners of the Airbnb have got bird seed outside, so we have these. Really cute little birds popping by every now and again, grab some bird seed, and the, uh, the hair ran across the patio. Th- thank you, Nitsa. My friend works for Microsoft in Dublin, and they sof- and and their software suite has nothing but Macs in them. The, so, best machine. Best machine for salespeople. Well, I do do sales. <laughs> Um, missed my question twice, MK. Because he doesn't want BS on your cap. Because if it was British shooting, it'd be BS. <laughs> that probably was it as well. Hang on, it wouldn't take much to turn that into a B, though. I'm never letting you loose on my cap. I'm not. I'm not going to leave the caps anywhere <laughs> near you. In English shoots. I honestly don't know where I came up with the name. Like, I I think I looked at all of the shooting organizations or companies and like English shooting was like the only one free apart from the fact that English shooting.com was already taken so it wasn't really that See, good of a when thought I, process. When I first saw the name of your channel I thought it was going to be some like white supremacy. You're not helping my FAC case here. <laughs> but it wasn't. I was pleasantly <laughs> surprised that it was not white supremacy it was just an idiot. You're not an idiot. I'm also not a white supremacist. Just definitely not a white supremacist. Um. <laughs> 
So, um, yeah, I don't know. Um, to be honest, I've thought about changing the name of the channel loads of times, but when, like, the most popular car YouTuber is called Smee150, I sort of came to the conclusion that it's not all about the name. Yeah, but Smee150 doesn't... Oh, there's the... It's back! Oh, it's gone. <laughs> Stay with me. Stay with me here. <laughs> Smee150 Smee doesn't have Smee, any, like... Shmee. Shmee doesn't have any, like, undertones of supremacy. I think that's just your head. What? I've never been... No, to be fair, I think... Like, I, I do get where you're coming from a little bit, but come on, I'm cute and fluffy. Mm. Um, any, anyway, yes, I... I but it, it, maybe it was a poor choice at the time, but the name's here now. And it, it was I was like 1920 when I came up with it. Age is no excuse. <laughs> <coughs> I've, matu I've matured. Racists can be any age. <laughs> <laughs> we need a Scottish shooting channel. There we go, Scottish shooting. You, you're not Scottish. I could be. I'm going to go to the Sharp. <laughs> Sharp. Sharp. But Sharp um, isn't in Scotland. It's way back there. Oh, talking to, um, talking about the drugs kicking in. Have any of you seen the... Uh, we're not. Like, just... We're, we're no. not. We're not. I do need to caveat that. Because some people had, can't take a joke. We have seen some interesting things on our way yeah. up today. Like the M6 Giraffe. I want... Like, let Did, me know if you know of the M6 Giraffe. And the, as you drive past it, it says, Google M6 Giraffe. So it he worked. Did. So you guys should Google... M6 giraffe. But if you haven't, if you didn't see that Google M6 giraffe and you were just driving along the M6 and you saw a giraffe, it's just a giraffe, you would think that someone has spiked your coffee. There is time to pull over and take a rest. <laughs> <laughs> Tiredness can kill. Keep to the left. That's it. Instead of instead of spending millions on an advertising campaign saying go left, they should say if you see a giraffe, time to stop. <laughs> You're getting too tired. Yeah. I'd feel um, sorry for people who live right on that junction because so they'd pull onto the junction like, oh, there's a giraffe, got to stop. Um, and the cows. Oliver. Do you remember uh, the cows? We saw the cows. Oh, God. The cow, we lost our it's, shit at the cows. But it's one of those, like, you had to be there moments. Yeah. And also, I'm not going to... They were, no, no, we're not going to, we're not going to talk about the preamble that led up <laughs> to the cows. But the, the cows. We, they were just there on the bridge over the motorway, like... Some, yeah, perfectly. Well, no, no, and, like, sort of part of the funny thing was all the way up here we saw car spotters, like people stood on the bri bridges, like making notes about with, cars with the, chairs, like chairs, they, they, they were and, ch and children and their daughter. Like it wasn't like they had just stopped for two seconds; they were like camped out to watch the cars. So when we came to this bridge and this cows. herd of cows came over, yeah, lost our ship. It was a long drive. It was it was it was a long drive. I don't think it was that bad a drive. You slept for a bit of it. I slept for five minutes, and Ten. then I then I got the jumps. What? Oh yeah, you know when you're falling asleep, <laughs> and you sort of like think you're falling. So he's been falling asleep. He's he, he's basically like this at this point, and he does this. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd hit something. <laughs> <laughs> I like how that's your first reaction. Oh, I must have crashed. <laughs> Um, we 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 did almost crash going airborne over the bridge though. There was no crash. <laughs> perfectly. Um, Aaron T is a red dot enough for mini rifle, or do you need something with higher magnification? Yes and no. Um, hmm? do, you, do you is a red dot enough for mini rifle? Yeah. Hell yeah. The, okay, so I, I'm really unique on that on that um thing. A lot of people disagree with me and say you need some magnification. However, um talking a lot with Josh Hicks who's one of our sponsor shooters who's up zeroing with us one day and we we're talking about he also agrees with me partly on this so using an, if you use an unmagnified red dot for um, and as a single optic um, if your eyesight is good enough and you've got a small enough dot you can see out to 100 yards you need to be able to pick up the A zone or at least have a reference um, I'm fortunate that I can see the dot on the target at those distances, no problem. Um, but one of the things we talked about was what do you do when you're up close because a small dot is really hard to acquire. You crank the brightness. Because when you crank the brightness, you increase the glare and thus mm -hmm. the effective size of the spot. So you can actually chain, make the spot bigger by doing so. That was because you've got the MRO 2 MOA dot. Yeah, small. Um, on the speed stills, useless. Like it's a fantastic optic still, mm -hmm. but the dot was just you did had to crank it right up. You want like a four or six MOA. Yeah, the the problem at the speed stills was it was a really bright day, 
So even with the brightness cranked on the dot, you're still getting this really nice, crisp, clean 2MOA dot. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, we were shooting yeah 100-yard targets. With... I should have put like a smudgy fingerprint on the lens. That would have helped. Yeah, then it like move, it goes like a shield. Um, move on. So um, I do actually highly rate shield sides, but they did... The old polycarbonate lenses. Everyone knows that the old polycarbonate lenses, as soon as you gave them a, clear, a clean, they were done. Like you, no matter how much you babied them, you would just end up scratching them, and then they're done. But they've they've improved, which is is what you should do. Yep. So we um yeah we were shooting a hundred yards with the it was actually the MRO HD that Daniela um lent us, um and we soon convinced her to return it, mm -hmm. um because all you need is the MRO. Uh, uh, Ben's on here, hi Ben, yep. and um yeah he reminds me that um me and him. Both shooting red dots. Yeah. We're hitting the. We've got this steel gong down on the range, which is about what's that? About six inches wide with a head box on it, which is about a two inch square. Mm -hmm. And um, both Ben and I were hitting that with red dots offhand at hundred yards. So, so yeah, it, once it, I figured out how much I had to aim off because that was the shield. <laughs> Just before I switched to the MRO. But both. But Ben was use. Um, ben, let me know in the comments what size. Um, what size dot you were using? So I think you're actually using a, fa a fairly large dot on your razor, and still being able to get that. So, but th but that's also why like the razor is such a good scope <clears throat> because you can use it like a red dot at one mm -hmm. time, crank it up, and then well you've got that six or ten times mm -hmm. uh, if you've got the Gen three. Um, but yeah, uh, I very much plan on no he had razor dot. Razor dot. Yeah. Okay, so okay. he's shooting using his forty-five degree dot. Yeah. So he wasn't even in like optimum position. He's using his forty-five degree and dot, hitting, the head. hitting this head box, two-inch square gong, um, offhand every time. I didn't quite get it every time because I had to walk it in first. So my <laughs> my thing with mini rifle is yes, they're going out to longer distances, certainly at the likes of um, Silverson Shooting Center. But let's just talk about IPSC mini rifle, which the, goes that, out to hundred yards. They do, but it's not as common. The majority of the target tree is much closer and personally i think there is more to be gained in terms of speed on the closer targets than on the long range i i would sacrifice a little bit of speed on the long range to have the the, the optimum the speed on the closer stuff difference is if you um you need your accuracy as well as your speed and you can't have accuracy if your target is completely obscured so you, you absolutely need, if you're going to shoot with the red dot alone you need to pick the right red dot yes however yeah. um most people shoot mini rifle with an lvpo um mm -hmm. low very low variable power optic i forget what it stands mm -hmm. for um generally it's it's an optic that is magnified one to six one to nine one to ten key thing it goes down to one you want an illuminated center dot, not an illuminated reticle, um, and there are quite a few good ones out there. It's actually recently very, very impressed with Caliber Innovations Vector Optics one. Yes, it's, it's very cheap. Now, it has all the hallmarks of a cheap scope, but for the price, you're actually getting a very capable bit of kit. Like you, yeah, I, I remember I, looking through mats, yeah. it was yeah, like, nice, nice. I would scope. say it was on par, if not better, than a Strike Eagle for half the price. So, we How, we, however, we should, that's the best scope in their range. Whereas we, we should get one in for review, shouldn't we, David? He's there. He's, he, he's he, he there, is isn't there. He? So if if David wants to send us down some, we will right, do so, some reviews. So so Ben was using the three MI dot, and I don't know what the yeah. dot is on your shield. I think it's the three three MI. Three or four, okay. maybe. Um, someone asking about the Typhoon defense. Uh, ben is actually probably the best person to talk to about yeah. Typhoon. Um, um, he well, moved. He moved on to a dissident. Yeah, basically the KL twelve, um, not the KL twelve, the uh, Typhoon F twelve. Um, for the money, it's okay. It will get you started in. What are they like? Nine hundred quid. There's definitely sub a thousand. Yeah. I, know, I know that. Um, it will get you into open division, right? But you will. Arms and RS one is cheaper and better. But it's not as competition ready out the True. box True. Um, so if you just want to pick up a gun and start in open division in in ipsc shotgun can't really go wrong with the f12 as soon as you start getting good enough that you're chasing places so first second and third that is when you're going to have to the, the gun just isn't up to it it's not up to it in terms of the reliability the build quality i mean um ben actually 
had a whole a whole box. gun. There was a box of spare parts. Yes, to go that, that, to go with that you gun. take to every single match. And then Ben ended up going on to the distant arms KL twelve. He's, he's gone from this box to a pouch. <laughs> you know, it's Russian. Well, not technically Russian, but it's Russian design. So it's built like a absolute tank. Um, it is a very well made gun. Yes. And dissident absolutely know what they're doing. Like I don't say this about a lot of people who modify mm-hmm. guns, <laughs> but dissident do absolutely know what they're doing with that gun. So, but then they're you know six thousand pounds. So you're you're getting what you pay for. Um, the Armsan is a potential sort of go between, which is whilst yes they they are a little bit cheaper, you're still going to have to spend probably five hundred to a thousand pounds. You are, pound you are and you want. So I I get this whole thing about people putting left hand charging handles and all this kind of stuff on it. An open gun is an open gun. You should be able to do loads of stuff to it. But I think a lot of people get hung up a bit too much on mm. the fact that it's not competition ready. It still has a Picatinny rail. Yes, it's on the dust cover, but it still has a Picatinny rail for you to slap a dot onto. Um, it has all of the controls that you need. You know, I don't really know what more you want from that. Um, the, the, the controls aren't just... They're, they're not as competition no, as you would like them. They're, they're not as not, easy to get but onto. But they're all usable. And the key thing about um, the arm sand, like the distant, is it's reliable. And the problem with a lot of these guns is that uh, especially things like the Typhoon, I'm sorry, When they, whilst they're new and they're still being run in, they, oh, sorry, after you've had this huge break-in period, which I think is 1,000 rounds of 36 gram cartridges, if your gun has survived that, you have this sweet, sweet period of where it just runs and runs and runs, yeah. and then things start to wear out. Mm-hmm. Or you get a gun like, um, I'm not going to name any more brands because we're not here to denigrate other brands, but there you are test. other... There are other <laughs> brands of gun which actually just start to fail as they get dirty, and they might start getting dirty after 50 rounds, which is fine if you're having a black on your local mm-hmm. range, but in a match where you might be expected to shoot 180 rounds, that's not well, going to... You're expected to shoot 100, 180 rounds, but you're putting thousands of rounds through that gun practice. For, for, for practice. Yeah. Um, anyway, I think... That's, we are... that's enough ripping on open guns. Well, and, and also I think we are hungry enough at this point. As you know, we've just... Uh, for anyone just joining, we have just driven up six and a half hours to Scotland. Six and a half hours of driving. That's not including the stop we and, made with like an stops, hour yeah. um, So we're quite tired. We're also quite hungry. Um, so whilst a little shorter than uh, usual, uh, I think we'll probably wrap it up there. But before um, you leave... Can I, can I just answer one question first? Oh, uh, because Peter Skellen is asking a question to us here at Magra yeah. Um Shoot your gun until it's hot, then do the nut up, and it will pull the barrel into tension and keep the nut in place. Peter, um, drop an email into yep. info at maglode.co.uk. Mm-hmm. We actually have a new tool. A wrench that we've yeah. just recently designed. We'll send them out to anyone who needs one for yep. their PPQ or 1911 trial. But yeah, get it really hot. Get it, get it to the point where it's getting loose. And then tighten it up and um, drop us an email, let us know your address and we'll get one of these tools out yeah. to you so you can do it. You can do um, it without, you can, you can tension the barrel without having to heat the gun up. Yeah. Um, but there we go. I mean, before you guys all go off, um, hit the like button. Um, sorry, it's a short one, um, short one this evening, but I thought it was better to do something rather than nothing. Uh, of course, there's going to be loads of hopefully photos and footage and, and clips potentially um, from this weekend and, and, and videos to follow on both Magload and English Shooting at the Scottish Championship mm-hmm. uh, IPSC UKPSA Level 3. Um, and yeah, I don't know what video is going to go out next on the channel, but I hope it will be uh, interesting for you guys. And of course, it should be back to normal uh, next week. It would just be my face in the camera going, Karen's been arrested. Sorry, guys. <laughs> this is Connor's shooting now. And then I'm going to sit down and eat a kebab in front of you. And then you're going to get arrested. Like, there's this this, this channel's cursed. They can't arrest me for eating a kebab. Depends what the kebab's made out of. Cats. No, I love cats. <laughs> Dogs. Yes, yes, you do. Um, but there we go, guys. Thanks for, for joining us all. Sorry again, it's short. But we hope you have a fantastic weekend and week. And, uh, yeah, we will, well, I hope to see you soon. Yeah.